Welcome to Garden Sanity. My name's Laura, and today I'm gonna to talk about my limelight hydrangea tree and show you what it looks like now in mid-January. And the reason why is because I want you to take a look at your own limelight hydrangea tree or any kind of other panicle hydrangea tree you have and get a really good look at the branches and stems. If you pruned it last spring, it's a great way to come out and look at where you made your pruning cuts and look at just how much has grown in just one season. It's also a good idea, especially if the sunlight's great for you, like it is right at this moment for me in the early afternoon, to get a look at branches that may be crossing, branches that may need to be clipped off. No, there's no way I'm pruning anything today, nor will I until early spring, probably mid-March is when I usually do it, but I wanna show you some things to look out for. And now that it's winter, we don't have that many chores to do, if much of anything in the winter time. This is a good thing to do is come out and just take a look at pruning cuts and see what's grown. So let's take a closer look. So right here, we've got a branch that's coming all the way down from the main trunk or all the way up. <laughs> Trees grow up, right? So right here, that's something I cut off last spring. And right here next to it, this brownish stem. Well, that is a stem that grew just last season. And if we follow that upwards, I'm gonna to try to go slowly so we can see. It's just one single stem that goes all the way up and you can't even see because there's other flower heads that are blocking it, but it's just a single stem. And that's what happens with a lot of these when they grow, it's just a single stem. So that's just one thing where you can see maybe some wood you cut off. And then what happens? Well, another branch is easily gonna grow there. Now, on this same branch where you've got, you know, it's coming up here, that's what I cut off. This was a long brown stem. Follow this one now. And it has a really funny curve. In fact, there's two of them that curve kind of funny. It goes down and then back up again. <laughs> and there's two of them sort of in parallel. So they have this sort of whoosh and then you have a ton of stems that again, go up. So here is something I cut last season. And what grew out of it were one, two, three stems. And what I can do this spring is I can come back in and I can cut that back even a little bit more. So again, where you make cuts, more stems are gonna pop up. So never worry about that. Here, for example, is where I made a cut. And again, three stems. This one a lot thicker than the other two. Just to show you the base of the tree and what the bark looks like as it's starting to get old. We planted this, I think around 2009 or 10, might've been a little bit later. I'm gonna put it on the screen cause I can never keep it straight. But what you can see is you can see, for example, this is an old stem that I cut back right there, okay? And then, moving back a little bit, I had to cut this last year because it actually split in two. In fact, how there are st stones in that, I do not know. <laughs> but anyway, I don't know. And here's another cut I had made. So this is a really old stem, as you can tell, but continues to have branches that grow out from it. And you can see that even down here. Now, let's take a quick look at these two branches here to see if they're crossing or not. While these two branches do look like they're crossing, if we go up here a little bit, you can see there's about a finger's worth of space, and that's good. And there's no damage, they don't seem to be knocking together. So in the springtime, I'll probably leave those. I won't need to cut either of those to make room for one or the other, which is nice. At the bottom, right here, this is the lowest branch coming out of the tree from the actual main trunk or stem of the tree. And you can see, again, I had cut some things off in the past. Last spring, I cut a stem here and had some more growing out, which is nice. Here's the backside 
I always call it back. There's no really front or back to trees, but at any rate, this is the older part and it goes up to about here. And I'm gonna curve around right here so you can see that was once a big stem. And that I think may have been one of the ones that broke off during the one of the tropical storms we had had a couple years back where I ended up having to do an emergency pruning. But you can see that other stems have been doing great. Now, maybe you'll notice things like this too, is a little tiny stem that's curving down. See how it's hitting against this? And if you look closely, you can see a little bit right here where the stem is hitting it. So that's something that I'm gonna wanna cut away and I can prune it back right there. And there's a lot of little stems like that. Like this guy, I probably wouldn't keep you know, this guy in the middle of the tree, you see how I'm pulling him down, another weird curvy stem. Those things can all come out. This guy right here, he's probably gonna come out and you see where he goes just to here and then stops. And what happens is if you do a good pruning every year, you're gonna eventually have some really strong stems growing like these guys. Now in the summer, I think I showed you, I mean, look at, uh, look at this one, for example. Oh, let's follow this one. Okay, this is a good example. So here we have the old trunk, right? And now I wanna follow this stem for you, okay? So we've got this stem going up, right? And he's going up here. And in fact, let's take a quick look, okay? Hold on, let me go on the other side. Yep, sure enough. I will have to cut him off. You see the way the branch, let's see if I can get in here. You see the way the branch is curving and you see that damage right there. So it's either this guy or this older branch and I'd rather keep the older branch, this guy. So in the spring, when I do do my pruning, he's gonna have to come off because you don't want, these two branches, as long as they rub together, there's gonna be infection that could set in, bugs can get in there, it's just not a good thing. So unfortunately, this guy will go, but let's just follow him anyway. So he butts up against this guy, right? And he keeps going and keeps going. Can you follow him? Let me, let me uh, shake him a little bit so you see which one he is. He has no other stems on him. Let me go around this way. So here I'm just gonna keep shaking him. And he goes all the way up. He's one of the tallest branches. So he's gonna come out, but that's not really gonna affect the tree. If you can see, there's a ton more big strong branches that I have. Okay, so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna take a couple of still pictures and then show you exactly where I pruned and what grew out of it. So first, let me show you this picture. I'm gonna use a stick to show you about another stick. <laughs> See where this stick is touching right there. That's what I pruned last spring. So that means that I pruned back whatever branch was shooting out up from that really tall. But look what happened. I got one, two, three more. And it's not always three. I don't know why it ends up that way as I keep showing you this, but three more branches grew out from that. And look how far up they go there again some of the tallest branches so now I'm touching another place where I pruned last year another tall stem that jutted straight up and I had three more branches again don't know why it's three it's just the way it is grow out from it and again you can see that those are some of the tallest ones that still have flowers on the end and these ones never bent in any of the storms I mean I can show you some pictures here from last year last season rather summer of 2022 and these guys are still standing just as beautifully tall and straight as they did last year, even in the crazy storms that we had. Really pretty. Well, geez, I don't want to lose all of these. What am I going to do? I will lose some of it because if I get greedy and I just want to keep the height and have it get as big as possible, well, I think that's partly what got me in trouble the last time I went through this, when we had the tropical storm. Again, I also wasn't pruning it 
as good as I'm doing now. Let me use a branch I can reach so I can actually show you what I'm planning on doing. All right, so let's look at this branch. So come springtime, what's really nice is these are already curving upwards, which is really nice. So they're not, you know, they're not extending beyond the bed. They're not taking over the tree or anything like that. They look really good. But I'm not gonna just let this branch be all the way up here because it's gonna eventually start to weigh down. This will get heavy once all the leaves and flowers are back on it. What I'll probably do is, you know, these are all nodules that are gonna be new stems, leaves, that'll turn into flowers eventually. So I'd probably go maybe to here and I would cut that much off. See that? So that'll still leave a nice stem to get stronger, but it'll be shorter and hopefully we'll handle everything better. Now, I do have a video, I have a series of videos in fact, on how I care and prune this hydrangea tree. So. I'm going to link to those at the end and in the description box below. That's where you're definitely going to see the how to prune. And that is, uh, that's more in depth than what I'm showing you now. What I'm showing you now is more just to give you an idea of get outside and just start looking and seeing if you pruned last year, what all grew back. And if you didn't prune, it's a good time to just look around the tree and start, start getting comfortable with the idea of, well, these two branches are crossing. I may have to cut one of them away. Oh, look, this branch is broken. I'm going to have to cut that off. Don't ever get discouraged though, because <laughs> if you look at my old videos, especially when I had to do the emergency pruning, you want to talk about getting discouraged. That was me because whew, I lost more than half the tree at that time. But I also do these periodic videos on this tree to show you that even if you do get discouraged, like I did, you don't need to be because long term these trees are resilient and they will bounce back. So I'm keeping this on for winter interest. It's only early to mid January. I mean, it's uh, what is it? The 10th today. I'm not sure when I'll get this video up. So let's say mid January. And a year ago, <laughs> no, a year ago, I did a video showing you how to get your snow if you have heavy snow off of these branches using a broom and just being very gingerly and careful about it so you could still keep the flowers for winter interest. Although occasionally you will get some of the flowers landing right in your bed or they'll blow across the gravel and I call those tumbleweeds. Now before I go inside I have to show you real quick that we've had crazy warm weather and now we're back into the 30s so now it's where it should be in winter time but look what happened in my shooting star hellebores that I just planted in August. Look at that. I have buds already. And I did check the other ones. I checked the candy love hellebores that are way yonder over there by the red bud stick in the distance. And those are just starting to bud. But look at these guys. And not only are there buds, and there's a little bit of winter heath blooming on this little tiny thing that I told you about in a previous video, which I'll link to above, so you can learn more about this guy. But look down here, <laughs> look at this. I have flowers. Usually the leaves start to go and then you cut those away and you have beautiful flowers. But these evergreen leaves still look gorgeous. And I've got flowers. The other day I was looking out the kitchen window and I said to my husband, am, are my eyes deceiving me? I mean, look at this. <laughs> They're so cute. I'm so excited. However, I don't know if it'll be this way every year because I think it was partly due to the extremely warm temperatures we had for a while. But that's really nice to see. And I like that we can see it from the windows, which was just what I was hoping for. Oh, and by the way, let me show you one other thing. Are you ready for this? Two little dianthus flowers, kind of frozen, but there they, there they are. <laughs> so I have some flowers in this bed. Oh, I just had to show you that. So I hope this helps you see some things that you can look for during the doldrums of January, where there's really not much gardening to do. You can get out and take a close up look at your tree maybe take a cup of tea with you, 
and just take a good look and appreciate your hard work. That's one thing I always say. I mean, we had a brutal summer, didn't we? So appreciate your hard work. Get an idea of how much things grew under your loving care. And also feel good that you don't have to prune anything yet because it's only January. <laughs> so that's my little video for today. And I will link again at the end of this video and below for the other limelight hydrangea tree videos you can watch. And until next time, happy gardening.